mentions me. I will lay down my life if the sex is free. Eventually, you'll see my ascendancy. Cause not the way Good job, Dad. Trigger warning, spoiler alert, someone go get a broom. You are listening to a housekeeping edition of the Tom Kelly Show. I, I, God, I said listening. Uh, we're experiencing a, I, I like the word experiencing. Yes, no? Oh, I, I like not only the word, I like I like experience. It does, That's, it feels good. Yeah, better to buy experience than things. So I, I'm with Jeanette Barber, my uh, Rosie O'Donnell's uh, supervising producer, head writer from that show, uh, brilliant New York Times uh, I'm sorry, not New York, New York USA Time. USA Today. Best-selling author. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I know, and you always say that that's for the people who can't read. But still, it was a very good, uh, it, it was a good You've place to be You've written two books that have wound up there, right? Yeah. One uh, there and one a Publishers Weekly bestseller. Okay, so there we go. Best-selling author, Jeanette Barber. Uh, friend and mentor, Jeanette Barber. A uh, woman who has given a lot of advice on this podcast until she stopped listening to it, Jeanette Barber. I've been a little busy. Oh, yeah, sure. Whatever. Traveling. The, the, anyway... Whatever it is, she's here, and I've got a lot of random things to talk about, and I figured I would do that. So I've learned a lot of little things about I'm doing just very happy that I don't have to clean. You don't have you to clean. you said it was a housekeeping show, it's, and I thought, you do not know who you've invited in. Mm-hmm. My house is about to go bad. Yeah, do you, do you pay someone to clean? No, that's the real problem. That's what I'm saying. I pay. Uh, when I was doing I well financially, there was a woman coming every other week here. Uh, and then I laid her off during a pandemic. Uh, uh-huh. And then now, now I said, whenever you feel there's an opening, come by, but no rush, I'm not here enough. In reality, I am catering to my nephew who's become a long-term house guest. Really, he's getting a clean sofa to sleep on. That's what he's getting. Uh, but I want to do it with, here's a few things I've learned. So the, there are things I want to impress with you. I got to figure out what things to say at the top of the show. If you are new to the program, uh, hit subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever your favorite audio podcast app. Uh, we're doing this show on YouTube. On um, We're doing Sunday night premieres at 10 and Tuesday night premieres at 10 if you want to chat with like-minded people. And if you are like-minded and if you want to be in the religion, that is the Tom Kelly Show, a burgeoning religion, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> kind of like Protestants. Uh, I was going to say, uh, kind of like that Zodiac, actually more real than your Zodiac stuff. Uh, we, we have a nice little group. They go to my YouTube channel, uh, Tom Kelly Show, and at 10 o'clock, there's uh, 7 to 15 people talking about whatever I'm talking about. Usually, they're in the little comments typing about how sexy I am, but while I'm here, I see Ma- uh, Mary Ann. I see Anne. I see Jacob Lee Downey. I see Diane, who is there, and I know I'm missing somebody, but anyway, I see all of you guys. Um, so I, that's one thing, like, I've been, I, oh, and by the way, so t- I have to tease. That's another thing I'm trying to do, Jeanette. Like when, when Are you going to call me names? Is it going to be something about not liking Listen my Listen here, top? four eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know I was going to be teased. Oh, my God. Uh, so, so, uh, uh, on the, so I think, like, one other thing, I'm trying to make the show better. And I've come to realize this is the podcast. Like, I'm like, oh, you need a slogan. And I've gone through 50 slogans. This started as a wedding podcast. Then it became uh, turning 2020 lemons into 2020 lemonade. I liked that one. Uh, that was great. And then the 2021 kind of passed. Uh, and I was still eating the lemons. And uh, then there was, uh, lately it's been one comedian fixing life. I like that. Uh, another favorite from the chat group. Do I change the slogan yet again to uh, getting back to me? Because that's kind of a phrase. I That's my nervous get I track. I like that, but I like one comedian fixing life better. Yeah, I think I do too. Uh, and I'm helping people get back to them. And then it becomes more complicated. But I have learned at the beginning of the show, you should say what people should expect. So they'll listen to all 20 minutes. Right. Do you like that? I like that. So today on the Tom Kelly Show, we have other words for bathroom. Oh. Big announcement. And then uh, Jeanette Barber here to just shoot the breeze. Mm -hmm. Yep. There you go. I'm very windy. (laughs) Are you windy? (laughs) Happens with age, but I think that's a different topic. So here's one on age. I did a show with uh, Ben Rosenfeld, who's been on the program, uh, his wife, Michelle Slonim, and he both invited me to do a uh, show at a retirement home in Eastport, New York, which- Always a great audience. You make- 
actually, they turned out to be pretty fun. Retirement home is a strong word. It was a 55 and over community. Oh, that's really a lot better than a dementia unit. <laughs> Just what I had in mind. By the way, I think that if I were still doing slogans for the show, there we go. Instead of one comedian fixing life, <laughs> Tom Kelly show, much better than a dementia unit. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And you said it on my show. Uh -huh. I own it. I think yes, that's how yours. that goes. Uh -huh. We were talking about intellectual property ownership before. So I think anything said on this show, any morsel of genius you have is automatically mine. Is I that think fair? Well, I think that's the case anyway. Great. That's the million. There's the million dollar slogan. <laughs> uh, so... I, I believe this. Uh, so here's what happens. I am now, first I go, it's a really nice brand new uh, 55 and up community. Like lots of little houses you could own if you're 55. Mm -hmm. And uh, I get into the clubhouse and the first thing I did was I called out a woman. Let me see if I can find her, uh, the picture I took. There's a, a, a gray Mercedes Benz. With a vanity plate, we'll call it NCC77. You see uh -huh. that car. What do you notice about it? Uh, well, I don't know. It's a thing. It's, it's a convertible. It's, uh, does it look like What do you notice about the way it is parked? Oh, crooked. Yeah, on two spots. Oh, yeah. There's a little line under it right in the middle. So I Lined it up right there in the middle. It was now, probably helpful. Now, we're spending more time narrating this for the audio listeners. Yeah. But So the woman was parked on two spots, and I didn't even know it was a woman. So- we're supposed to do the show with a headliner. I won't say his name, but it turned out he didn't show up because he thought the show was next week. That's the problem with your mom and pop gigs. Yeah. Uh, in the end, and luckily- And the dementia. And the dementia. And the fact that it was a dementia unit, yeah. it turned out it was the comedians who had the dementia. We now uh, know that. Luckily, they had me on the show and they had booked me for much less than what I was capable of. So I'm now kind of headlining as the middle act. Uh -huh. uh, and anyway, and, but this, I started my set by saying, is there someone here with the license plate NCC77? And this woman who looks like Janine Pirro raises her hand. And I'm like, yeah, you parked like an asshole. <clears throat> That's always a good opening line. It did not work, but it made my that day. I that would work. That would not it work. It did not work at all, it, but it made my day. And, uh, <laughs> I, and, and I, and I kind of had a great, like, set. Oh, and then, but in the middle of my set then, she gets out. She walks up in the middle of my set and she parked the car correctly. So I feel like I made a difference in the world. Well, you did, assuming all the, the, all the spots were filled at the end. Yes, it was a packed out lot. And, oh, honest, well, and, listen, then, and again, I've been talking about this a lot on the show. What about rules, people? Okay, we have the lines there. There's a reason why they drew the lines. Uh, listen, we're in a society now where people are bringing their dogs into Starbucks and I'm not allowed to complain, all right? There are people farting and not apologizing on closed-in <laughs> spaces, all right? We're all so worried about ourselves and then we're wondering why is society falling apart? I if, couldn't agree more. If we all took care of our own stuff, Okay, uh, you know, like there's all these people in my parents' hometown. They got these little flags up saying society's falling apart. Meanwhile, they all have little license plate covers so the the cameras don't capture their uh, really? when they you know they're all dodging the tolls and whatever uh, else it is that they get by having a license plate cover on. But no, it's all the people kneeling during the national anthem that are screwing up our country. No, if we all took care of our own crap. Yeah, and follow the rules. There's follow a power the in or following rules. Or take rules. the rules off the books. Or take the rules no, off the No, we need book. the rules. If we need the rules, let's There's follow the There's freedom in rules. There's freedom in rules. So anyway, I, but I and, and in the beginning of my set, Jeanette, I had this moment where I was going to start making fun of all the old people who yeah, were honestly, 55 and up, right? I, hang on. And I then I realized, that. Yeah. hang on. Well, here's what I rethought. I, and I said this on the stage is uh, I realized uh, I'm only nine years away from being eligible of owning in this establishment. Yeah, that's disturbing. Yeah. By the way, also disturbing. It's a senior citizen community with only a three star rating on Google. <laughs> oh, my God. And apparently some of the reviews are like grumpy residents standoffish at the tennis court. I'm like, who rates their own senior and citizen center with less than five stars? That kills your resale value, old people, as well, if they're honestly, listening. But 55 is, you know, I've got, I've got purses that age. I, not shoes because they wear out. Um, but uh, 55, I, I find that an odd um, uh, age to need to go to the home. Yeah, it, it, well, it's not the home. It's a place where you can live with other old people. Oh, goody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, oh, I Give forgot to put this in the tease. Send I knew me an application. <laughs> I knew there was something I needed to tease. There were. I did. Uh, uh, so I as I uh, I was at Good Morning America's concerts this morning. Oh wow! And do you know who the performer was? Yes, the cast of Hamilton. I knew that. And who do you date? Who's at Hamilton? A guy. There you go. Yes. So I was at Hamilton. Did you see him? Was he there? No. Okay. <laughs> he had to do something, but it was back in the theater. <laughs> but, 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 you know, but, but like now I felt weird. For, like there was a flash there. I'm like, for a minute, do I, I pretend? Do no, I say I think I saw him? I forgot. Well, he had to get up at four o'clock in the morning, unless it was three o'clock in the morning. But uh, he wasn't at my house. What do I look like? You know. So I was uh, talking to the publicist riser. and I said, I knew a stagehand there. Uh -huh. I guess I kind of gave away the department, but that's fine because then the person goes, which one? I say the guy's name mm -hmm. and she goes, oh my gosh, he is so sweet. Oh, so Who I like that? Jeanette's did you boyfriend. Say that too? Well, I can't give away the name of your oh, boyfriend, you but I could give away the name. No, no, the title, the person. You the said title was in the publicity department. The publicity I department. have her name written down later. Okay, you can tell me later. Um, uh, yeah. That's Nina. What, but yeah, have, there's a woman named Nina. They have met. Uh, you have met him. Yes, I met him. He's very nice, but I don't know how to take him because I felt like, uh, you know, Jeanette is my longtime mentor and friend, and I felt like I was meeting, uh, you know, not a future stepdad is yeah. wrong, but yeah. Um, uh -huh. But it's like, what are you doing uh, banging my mentor? You know, like it, <laughs> it kind of felt like, like when you're, you know, uh -huh. I knew Jeanette's last. Uh, that creep that I used to go out with. Yeah. Former lover. Yes, please, <laughs> I'm going to be sick. I'm going to vomit. And then there would be but there real you go. And whatever. And as a guy who's protective of you, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if anybody will be good enough for you in my mind. Uh, you know, now I feel like I'm talking That's to my so nieces. Sweet. I feel the same way. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of their age. Oh, wait, no. Um, but I think it was the same for him because um, I do talk about you like you're the second cousin. Coming. And he knows that you matter and you needed to like him. Yeah. And I liked so, him. And, yeah. and he, uh, and he by the way, if any of you want to impress me, get me free tickets to Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, what's funny is I'm remembering that I talked about this whole experience on the show. Uh -huh. You called me during the show, offering me the tickets when I was podcasting from Jones beach yep. five days a week. Should I be going back to uh, more than twice a week? Well, I always think more is better. Right. Um, uh, and what I know from uh, the podcast, oops, the podcasting people that I talked to back uh, when I was talking about doing one with somebody else um, is uh, the more consistent, uh, the better. Uh, when I was doing that ill-fated one, which we yeah, we were about, discussing that yeah. awful thing. But that that's what they said is that they'll start with a couple of days a week, but you're not going to get real numbers until your five days a week. Yeah, so along those lines, getting some real numbers. If they play, I may have screwed up some. Uh, uh, one of the things I do when warming up for Hamilton, and if there's anybody listening from the Hamilton audience, what a great crowd. They just attract uh, oh, yeah. positive people. They were inspiring kids. They were theater kids. Uh, I want to... Uh, I want to... Give a couple quick shout outs to uh, uh, little Ava, who was a, a seven year old kid who came to, uh, dressed as King George. Oh, God. And I don't have video of this, but I do have a still picture. She was waving in her little King George costume. Uh, there were a couple of theater kids from Brooklyn. Uh, a shout out to uh, little Cuz who was freestyling for the first time in front of a large crowd and he did a great job. Uh, and then there were a bunch of other just talented people who may, you know, who shared their gifts. Uh, I'm sure I'm showing a couple of their clips right now. So that way, that's how we get the numbers up is by celebrating other people. Yes. Uh, you know, that's the other one is I, that, like, I like doing the show solo, but when I enroll other people, I find I steal a few listeners. The numbers go up whenever you're here. You have a few. You still have a few super fans. I know it's really fun. They don't uh, that because I haven't been around. Uh, and then they'll for a while. And then they'll send me little notes saying you're nothing without Jeanette Barber. <laughs> I don't think that's happening. Yeah, you're pre pretty darn close. <laughs> you should have Jeanette there more often. You got great chemistry. You're kind of a snooze alone. I don't. Think I only listen alone. when Jeanette's on. Well, thank you. Well, that's glad. I'm glad you're but here. But we do get along. We've never had an argument. We've never had a bad moment. No, uh, I disagree with that. Which one? Well, you, oh, when well, I was your assistant, that I would make mistakes all the time. Well, that's not the same now that thing I don't work happened. for you. It's so much easier. I was wonderful to work for. You were. Uh, and then one day, we're not quite there yet, we will tell stories about what it's like to be Jeanette's
Jets assistant. Uh, for those of you who oh, yeah. uh, want to hear more about it, um, while I can't tell the story, all I can say is go watch The Devil Wears Prada. That woman has nothing on my stories. Thank you. <laughs> but I was never mean. I, no, but I, you were not. I was not mean. I was not mean to other people, but I was a bit of a... No, I, 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 we it's told not the, like I didn't ride a broom, but I, I wouldn't ride a broom... Uh, no, you, know, you were fine. I, no, because yeah. you were... You got, first of all, we were in our daytime boot camp, and I say this out of respect, but our, you know, Rosie was... Uh, Ex- exacting is a good word because it was a multi-billion dollar her, live yeah. show. And one time I actually said, I think that was the best thing that, uh, uh, because yeah, she had standards and, and the people uh, who came out of that, uh, everybody, are the best. everybody there who worked on that show pretty much, right. uh, went on to be a big shot and the best at what they do. Right. So and it I was actually bouquet. do think that what is, so you have to be better than anybody else. How does that hurt you? I remember back in the old stand up days, um, people, um, you know, there's this whiny, uh, you know, oh, it's hard to be a woman, which I never actually thought. Sorry, I've just offended a lot of politically correct people. Um, but, uh, and they would, you know, that, that women had to be, you know, funnier than men. And that's true. Uh, okay. How bad is that for you? Well. So I need to be even better? Okay, I can do that. So as the world is shifting and the world is discriminating against a white male. And I'm saying that out loud. We're, we're now shooting allies in the foot on certain things. I had one big job where somebody went into a meeting and said, eh, we shouldn't have a, a white guy do this next year. Uh, we had, and I can't say what it was or whatever. And then I've even had it happen a lot on a low-level comedy thing where there was a great comedy booker I work for a lot. And she said, Tom, I need to cancel this gig because I already have three white guys on the show. Yeah, and, we used to have a lot of that. Uh, you know, yeah, got, well, it used to be one guitar woman act, on one show. woman, one yeah. black guy. One, and and yeah. listen, so we went through that. I'm not happy about this uh, as a man who always tried to bring other people to the table and it didn't mm-hmm. matter what the balance was, was my approach. Right. Um, I now have to be the, at least the second funniest white male on the show. To How your does point, that you hurt can't. You? It doesn't feel good when it happens from, especially when it comes from people you built up. Right. That's the part oh, that hurts me. Oh yeah, no, me. that would bother. As a man that's, who has a career a of building up women, yeah. it hurts me a lot. Yeah, that's a different. Subject. But uh, but using my father's great advice, uh, nobody cares. Yeah, you know my I father. Think, you know, I, I I think you can lean into it's hard. Um, the, it, you know, if, if only I wasn't a, a woman and people are mean, and if I wasn't, uh, but if I wasn't whatever it is you are, yeah. if I was thinner, if I was taller, if I was this, I was that. You can live in that space, but that won't help you. That won't do anything for you. The victim shit does nothing for you. So I think it's it's. I never. I. It must have happened to me because I was definitely female my entire life. Yeah. Uh, so it must have happened to me, but I never felt it because I don't care. Well, I'm trying to do, I'm, do a job here. I, so I, if they're laughing, I did it. If they need to laugh more to get booked, I'm going to try to get funnier. So I'll tell you why in a second, but uh, I, I'm going to probably stockpile a few pre recorded podcasts over the uh-huh. next couple of weeks. And one of the ones I want to do is a speech my father gave me and my brother at different points when we were kids. Uh, and it's the nobody cares speech. Uh, yes, life isn't fair. Nobody cares. Uh, you know, my brother had trouble in school. I actually had trouble in school uh, in different ways too. And then we would say, oh, that one has more money. They're going on a boat. Why don't we go out on boats? And my father would say, yeah, life isn't fair. Uh, you got to get over that. Nobody cares. Now, and then he would say, and then he would say, the the honest to God truth is there are people who care. I care, you know, like I care about your struggles. You feel bad for me, but at the end of the day, you caring doesn't help. Right. You know, so you got to, what are you going to do next? And, uh, I may do that as a 20 minute podcast one day. Um, but what I loved bringing it back to Rosie, cause it'll lead to my big announcement is, Oh, did I mention we have a big announcement on today's show? No idea. Uh, no idea what it is. Uh, but yeah, it was boot camp. It was the the and never it was everybody, especially you, were perfectionists, and we were perfectionists on live TV four out of five days a week. And I think it led to a lot of people being great at what they do. Yeah. Including- you were perfect because you had to be. It was the only way to keep your job. You had to be. <laughs> you had really yeah. high standards and you make those standards or you go away. You don't sit around and whine. Yeah. I can't. You don't you want your do boss to look like an a-hole out. on TV, you know? Yeah. Uh, so the big ending to that is uh, our old friend Joey Cola was very, very kind to me. Uh, 
you have, you have had a great influence on the show. You guys should go back and listen to, I believe it's episode 210, around there. Uh, and it's the uh, perfection chat that you had. Uh, wait, hang on. Project uh, positivity. What perception was Perception of success. Perception of success. Yeah. So since you've been on the show, I went down to the Bahamas with the, the team from Review. Uh-huh. I could have told them, oh, well, this place screwed me over. This place screwed oh, me yeah. over. Oh, yeah, no one wants to hear and that. And white mail this, white mail no that. Nobody wants to hear it. No Nobody one cares, cares, Dad. Uh, then I, uh, but so I was positive down there. Uh, and then I have put it out to people that uh, I'm in a good spot. I am enjoying freelancing. Sometimes I'm lying to myself when I say that, but I am. There are benefits to it, but it's an effort to say it out loud for as much as I would mm -hmm. love stability. And I said, but I am looking for freelance work in September, uh, if not a permanent home. And a uh, big announcement. Oh my God. I am substituting. Not, 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 it's not a full-time job, but our old friend Joey Cola was very kind. He's very in demand right now. Uh -huh. He is doing the uh, Rachel Ray show. Yeah. He is doing the Drew Barrymore show. Oh, wow. But he can't be in both places at the same time. Oh. So he was very good to let me do a lot of subbing for him between now and November. Oh, my God. Now, very clear. That's fantastic. It's fantastic. It was already made very clear that I am second banana. Uh, it, like, the hard part about working for the best in the business is, at best, if you work your ass off, you're the second best in the business. And already one person that's made a joke. That's pretty darn good. And that's pretty darn good. But anyway, for you guys, there's a lot of people who say, oh, Tom, I don't love your podcast. I'm I want to so see you. Uh, I want to see you at a daytime show again. I... I'm breaking my rule of generally, I don't usually promote when I'm doing substitute work, right. but because it's Joey, he's cool. And because it's, uh, I, I put it's great substitute. Well, work. Well, it's great substitute work, but for you guys who are listening to the show, who are Tom fans, um, I put the dates. I am tentatively booked at these two shows and a link to where you can get tickets. One iota.com. If you want to see me work at Rachel Ray, you can, if you want to see me work at Drew Barrymore, you can. And if something goes wrong, worst case scenario, you're seeing Joey call of the best in the business at those shows. So uh, those tickets are on you the website. You can't lose, but if you haven't been in an audience with Tom as uh, the warm-up, I'm telling you, you have to. It's You're so good. You you're are, so good. You're so kind to say it. And honestly, and, and, uh, and what's kind of cool is you put it out there, I like freelance work. You know what I love about freelance work? By the time you start to hate your coworkers, the job is over. The job is over. Yeah. And or and hate your coworkers is such a strong word, but by the time you get irritated, yeah. by the time you start noticing how someone else breathes, right. it's over. Like what I love about Good Morning America, and I want to end on a positive note. Uh, I want to have a special thank you to my boss, Kyle Morris. Have you noticed my red pants? You guys at home have I like them. Because, uh, there we go. Ooh, Woo! red pants day. It I'd is, whistle, uh, but I can't. Yeah, there we go. For YouTube, I'm making sexy butt noises. <laughs> uh, sexy it's not butt a noise. gestures. It's not a noise. It's sexy butt gestures, whatever it is. Uh, so about 10 years ago, uh, my boss, Kyle Morris, and I... Back when these pants were in style for men, uh, <laughs> my boss Kyle and I accidentally wore the same red pants on the same day. And I would say there were probably two or three times through the years where I don't know if she did it on purpose, but like I think one year we purposely planned red pants day. And then I remember it was the day a woman who was very kind to me at The View who has her own MSNBC show now, Nicole Wallace. I don't know if you know who she is. I don't know you don't have cable. Name. She's big yeah. on MSNBC now. Somebody she was a host at a View for a year and I think she announced she was leaving. And then I went up to go get my Good Morning America paperwork and Kyle sees I'm sad. She's like, Tom, how about Red Pants Day tomorrow? <laughs> and there was one or two other times like that. Uh, she we did she did a virtual Red Pants Day with me during 2020, and uh, the big uh, ending is last night. I'm kind of sad because a guy you might have met and might remember at the View, the outside prop guy, Bo Kroniak, who is a a firefighter, a volunteer firefighter in New Jersey, uh, and and a huge personality and a guy who was good to me uh, when. And I worked at uh, The View because uh, what would be kind of crazy at The View, uh, you know, Jeanette worked with me at The View for a year. And again, I've said this before, I owe Jeanette The View. I owe Jeanette every good thing that you guys know me for. I owe either directly to Jeanette or indirectly to Jeanette. And, you know, and again, Domino's a success. I don't owe only her, but she's one of those first Domino's. That said, bro, Bo Kroniak 
just a man of a man, a fun guy. And uh, there would be times during his crazy day, I would come down from a high of the show. Uh, like the big one for me was when uh, uh, Barack Obama was on The View and it was the pomp and circumstance you just could not imagine at that point. Yeah. And then there's nothing like you're locked in the building for an hour. I performed for 45 minutes long before I was ready to do such a long warm up. And uh, I go out, I sneeze, Jeanette. It's all right. Monkey pox. That is how um, I yeah. Now, is that a pet name? Monkey pox? Yeah. Go read a newspaper. <laughs> uh, anyway, with uh, I, I go outside. And there's nothing funnier than seeing streets that were swarmed with police and wow. secret service all empty. And there I am in my little black suit with my American pin tie. And I just remember I saw Bo getting ready to drive to New Jersey and I just rode with him for a few blocks to decompress and enjoy the moment. Uh -huh. Because I knew once I got back to the apartment, it was over. And anyway, but that sums up him. He, he's a boisterous man, wore a lot of colorful costumes on Halloween and a uh, funny giving man. And uh, yeah, I'm sad that I won't get to work with him uh, anymore. Why? Uh, oh God, I made it sound like he died. Just yeah. retired. He's happy. Oh, thank God. That yeah, was he really, just retired. That he's was, happy. Yeah. Because I thought this is a, that, yeah, that no, is no, no, very an happy. And then had. in the middle of me yeah. writing this beautiful Facebook status about how much I like a guy, Kyle Morris sends me a text saying, Hey Tom, red pants, red day, pants day tomorrow. And she's right, the only day we could really wear I red worn pants. I would red pants if you told me. Well, I got this table in front of us, so I don't think I could really, uh, unless I do the whole podcast, like, and I can't even lift my knee up this high. Ah, there you go. Oh, that is. Oh, uh, that's very painful. That's not. Uh, yeah. Okay. The stool's just a little no too high. No more children. For okay, Tom. we're way over the uh, uh, the limit of the show. By okay. the way, you're the woman who said do 20 minutes. We're at 20 something. Uh, Jeanette. Do you have anything you're promoting or pushing? No? No, just my friendship with Tom. It's there you very, go. very That's important it. to me. That's it. So, uh, folks, uh, show love where love can be shown. Uh, hit subscribe if on the other platforms because, again, that place, YouTube is sneaky, people. YouTube sometimes shows you the show, sometimes it doesn't, but there's a new episode guaranteed on Mondays and Wednesdays. And if you go to TomKellyShow.com, there's a lot of other content uh, also on YouTube, TikTok, and, uh, and Instagram. Anyway, people, that's it for now. Good night, New York. Good night, Alexander Hamilton. Is there a good Hamilton ending? Oh, no. I'm sure there is, but I can't think of it. Um, uh, I'm not going to waste my goodbye. Uh, you know what? I should have just said goodnight. Yeah, I, I, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody. I love that. <laughs>